Doo -doo. High Tide versus Jund. This is a shardless Ooh. agent build of Jund. Interesting. So a four color Jund build with shardless agent. And they're, uh, they're already well underway. Uh, looks like Michael with High Tide is up a game, but uh, Peter has a Bloodbraid Elf and a Tarmogoyf uh, ready there. We'll uh, wait to see how many cards Michael has to see how much potential danger Peter is in. Michael does have that Candelabra on the table, which has a, an ability that costs uh, X mana to untap any number of land, well, and a number of lands equal to X. Uh, basically, the way this High Tide deck works is it casts a one blue mana instant called High Tide that makes all islands tap for an additional blue mana. Then it uses things like the Candelabra we just saw and a card called Turnabout costs four, untaps all of your lands, has a bunch of other modes, usually used to untap your lands in this deck, to generate a ton of blue mana and uh, combo th kill through cantrips and cunning wish and things like that. So Peter is, uh, looks like that was the end of Peter's turn and uh, we'll see what Michael has here. Lots of cards in his graveyard. I see a Force of Will, uh, an old Brainstorm, and a Turnabout removed. And uh, see, it looks like he just has two cards in hand. Uh, I think he just drew a Ponder. And we see High Tide and Ponder. Uh, Michael at six, facing down a lethal attack. Uh, what I presume is a lethal attack, not knowing exactly how big that Tarmogoyf is. Michael looking for something and finds Time Spiral, which will allow him to untap six lands, and uh, both players are gonna get a new hand of seven. Uh, yeah, we do see that Time Spiral. Looks like it's about to resolve. Uh, one thing Michael has to be a little worried about, though, uh, Peter's deck is playing a number of burn spells. He has a couple lightning bolts and a few punishing fires. This is game two. We're not sure how many of those he left in. They're not great against Michael's creatureless deck. But if he did, giving Michael, giving uh, Peter this new hand of seven could be dangerous for Michael at just six life. We'll see what Peter can draw and we'll see if Michael can pick up seven cards that allow him to continue this combo. Uh, Michael, as you can see, actually there now down to five. So just a Punishing Fire and a Lightning Bolt, or a couple of Lightning Bolts would do it. If he, again, if he has those cards in his deck. And both players going through a lot of shuffling, making sure they're randomized after shuffling those graveyards back in. Uh, and we've just been informed also that Michael has uh, one blue mana floating and the storm count is at four. Uh, you, we just saw a deck that uh, could win with a storm spell and tendrils of agony. Chose to reanimate a bunch of giant monsters and attack with them instead. But I think here we're going to see uh, Michael looking to build up a really large storm count. Probably use cunning wish to get a brain freeze and uh, and mill all of Peter's library if he can get there. Seven cards. That is so many cards in a deck that is so full of blue search spells. And um, one of the things that usually happens at this point is that the kill is largely academic. Um, Peter, if he has the right sideboard cards, might be able to fight back, but Peter's sideboard includes zero um, pyroblasts, red elemental blasts, mind break traps, or anything like that. This leads me to believe that Michael uh, Tabler is very easily gonna come through here and take this game. Zero mana floating, casts the ponder, or sorry, uh, casts the preordain, storms at five. Yeah, draws a high tide. It's, uh, it's pretty hard for high tide to lose in this scenario. They don't really don't have a lot of dead cards. It's uh, an extremely redundant deck using merchant scroll to search out more combo pieces brainstorm to keep going, that preordain you just saw to keep going, ponder, 
yeah, potential and, to draw another time spiral. So you're and, seeing here those draw spells cast. And that merchant scroll is in Michael Tabler's hand. He actually does not need to do anything else here besides uh, just tap his manas a little bit, build up his high tide if he wants, and he can merchant scroll for a blue sun zenith and kill Peter Tragos right now, so long as he doesn't fear um, Peter Tragos having a sideboard card like Mindbreak Trap or the like. Yeah, and Michael doesn't have uh, doesn't have Peter's deck list, so he may be worried about something like Mindbreak Trap. But uh, we'll see how he chooses to play this. That's one of the things that'll be different when people get to the top eight. You will have access to that full information, but in these Swiss rounds, you're going to be flying blind, so you better know how matchups could work. Yep, I think we're going to see Michael try to get a couple more high tides going if he can before using that candelabra to untap all of his lands and produce a ton of mana. And we do see another high tide, which I believe puts the high tide count at three. I see two in the graveyard and one was cast before the time spiral. So each island over here is gonna produce uh, four blue mana. Giving Michael access to like uh, four, eight, 12, 16, way more than enough mana. And just deciding how he wants to go about this. We're gonna see a merchant scroll. Uh, not sure exactly how many mana Michael has floating, but I don't see his, uh, his mana count becoming too much of an issue with this uh, candelabra, healthy number of islands, and uh, three high tides going at this point. We do see Blue Sun Zenith come out, which serves multiple roles. It can, uh, Michael can cast it on himself to draw a ton of cards and potentially draw something like a Turnabout or another Candelabra to keep going. And it's a win condition. He can uh, target Peter for, uh, you know, X is one plus the number of cards in your library and uh, deck Peter that way. One of the interesting questions when it comes to uh, high tide decks is what are the kill conditions? For Michael, he has one main deck Blue Sun Zenith, and then with access to Cunning Wish, can get another Blue Sun Zenith in his sideboard or get Brain Freeze. Um, and those are his two kinds of win conditions. Yeah, so three total win conditions in this deck between the main and sideboard. One Blue Sun Zenith in the main, one in the side, and one Brain Freeze in the side, uh, which he can get with his three Cunning Wishes. And we are seeing... Or are anybody interested? Team SCG player Tom Martell has won the Pro Tour. Congratulations to Tom Martell, the Pro Tour champion up in Montreal. A uh, recent acquisition for Star City Games as a writer. Many, many congratulations. Tom Martell, good job. Yeah, congratulations to you, Tom. And here we see Michael pondering his options, that candelabra is used, just trying to figure out if the coast is clear. I think I actually see an underground sea on uh, Peter's side of the table. And uh, high tide is a symmetrical effect, so Peter has access to a lot more mana than you might think right now, a lot more mana than Michael might think. I don't think it's going to come up though. Uh, Peter counting uh, one way, one quick way of uh, figuring out how many cards your opponent has in their library is counting their permanents, graveyard, and hand instead of actually going through the process of counting their whole library. Taking that number and just subtracting it from 60 after confirming with your opponent that they have a 60 card deck. In this case, Peter has no graveyard because a time spiral was cast earlier this game that shuffled his graveyard back into his deck. So just both players. Uh, going ahead and confirming how many cards Peter has, and it looks like that blue sun zenith is lethal. And Peter offers the handshake, Michael takes the match 2-0. A quick 2-0 there for Michael Tabler. And uh, we'll see if we have any more uh, matches for you. And we'll be back to the booth in a minute. That's. Uh, Probably a pretty tough matchup for Jund. Uh, the discard is definitely good, but as we were saying, High Tide is a, a very redundant deck. The, uh, the High Tide card itself is 
important, but he has uh, merchant scrolls to basically act as additional copies of that. And looks like in this game he was able to 